It was late afternoon on a hot summer day when Clyde Neely pulled his 1955 Ford pickup off Memorial Drive and into Valley View Cemetery. His partner, Darrell Pook, sat next to him, drinking a Coca-Cola and bobbing his head to a new song by Johnny Cash playing on the radio. Darrell's younger cousin, Seth, sat between them, talking their ears off about some blonde with a nice pair. Clyde parked the truck along the eastern fence. They got out and each pulled a shovel from the truck bed. The new plot was up a gravel path, and they would have to walk the rest of the way. "'I tell you, she looks like Marilyn Monroe's long-lost twin sister,' said Seth. He ran his hand through his ginger hair. "'Walking down Main Street like she just walked off a movie set. Oh, man, you should have seen her. Hooey!' "'You're full of shit.' said Darrell, shaking his head. No woman in Leicestershire looks half that good. Let's get a move on it, guys, said Clyde. Parker wasn't pleased about the last job, said it was messy. Parker can lick my boot, said Darrell, as they arrived at the marked plot. Cheap bastard always making us work overtime. I'm getting tired of it. Seth, who couldn't work five minutes without smoking a cigarette or leaning on a fence post, nodded in agreement. All Parker does is sit in that office of his all day, flogging his log, probably, while we slave away out here. Are you too tired of eating? Because you won't be doing much of it if you keep slacking off. Now dig. Clyde broke the ground, picked up a pile of dirt and tossed it over his shoulder. I could go back to mowing lawns. Easy work, said Darrell. Yeah, it'd get paid jack shit, said Clyde. His shirt was already dusted with earth. Cemeteries don't bother me none. I don't believe in ghosts or ghouls or any of that kid shit. The thing I do mind is missing out on a day's pay. He shot Darrell a serious look, and his partner started digging. Seth walked over with his shovel already blabbering away. You ever think about all the bodies running away under here? All those worms crawling in and out of their noses and... Shut up. Daryl gave his cousin a good whack on the shoulder, and the kid got to digging. A couple hours passed. The sun hung high in the summer sky, and the men baked in that hole, which had grown four feet deep. Gentlemen... They looked up to see Parker, the caretaker, standing over the hole. He was a big, burly man with a buzz cut, beady eyes, and a permanent scowl. His dog, Hooch, a St. Bernard, was sitting next to him, a nasty pink tongue hanging out of his mouth. Good afternoon, Parker, said Clyde. Floral Nursing Home had three deaths in the last two days. And we have the special privilege of burying all of the bodies here at Valley View. In order to accommodate this unusually large number of burials, I'm going to need you three to work overtime tonight. I need the holes dug by sunrise. You got it? Darrell plunged his shovel into the dirt. Three plots by tomorrow morning? Sam L. Parker, that'll take us all night. We're only halfway done with the first one. It might, said Parker, a tiny smirk on his face. But if you want to work for me again, you'll do it. I don't gotta put up with this, said Seth. Murphy's Deli is hiring clerks, and I heard they treat their employees real nice. Even let them take home a pound of meat a week. Parker smirked, the expression of a man who knows he has the upper hand. Is that right? Well, maybe you boys ought to pile up in that rust bucket truck of yours and go ask Bill Murphy for a job. Clyde quickly stepped in front of Daryl and Seth. It's fine. My partners have just gotten a bit too much sun. We'll have this done well before morning, Mr. Parker. Good, said Parker. He patted Hooch on the head. Make sure it looks clean, too. I don't want any beer bottles or shit lying around like last time. Of course, said Clyde, giving his pals a sideway glance. 
And if you see any squirrels running around down here, you have my permission to kill them. Little vermin running around chewing up flowers and pulling up flags. Took out four with my shotgun just this week. He walked back to his office, Hooch at his side. Daryl spit in Parker's direction. Son of a bitch. He's crazy if he thinks we can get this done in time. We really will be here all night. Seth dug his shovel into the ground and leaned on the handle. Takes at least four or five hours to dig a decent hole. I ain't that good at math, but there's no way we can get this done on time. They'll have to toss the rest of the bodies into Queen Hannah and call it a day. Clyde pretended he didn't hear Seth. Listen, if we work fast and don't bullshit, we can get out of here before midnight, all right? Get home and maybe even have some time to make it with the wife. Daryl laughed. <laughs> yeah, right. And what the hell is he talking about with squirrels? Said Seth. Daryl shook his head. Who knows? Guy's a little nuts. Yuck, yuck. Now come on, let's get back to work, said Clyde. Time's a wasting. They dug, and they dug some more. With each foot of dirt they uncovered, the sun traveled an interminable distance westward. Around 8.30 p.m., Seth went back to the truck to get the oil lantern. They were talking about whether or not the Yankees would make it back to the World Series. Seth was yammering on about his god-awful bets when they heard a long howl off in the distance. Seth gave Daryl a worried look. Coyotes, said Daryl. Coyotes? You get used to hearing them out here. Don't piss your pants. I'm not afraid of any coyotes, said Seth. I'll tell you, though, I've heard some strange things about this place. Don Barker, guy washes windows down on Taft, told me some wild story about his dad. Gave me the spooks. Clyde rolled his eyes at Daryl. Don said his dad was out here one evening, years ago, tending to his mother's grave, when he sees a crazy-looking guy run out of the forest. When the guy got closer, he could see it was an Indian, looking like he was straight out of gun smoke. He couldn't believe his own eyes till he saw the long knife in an Indian's hand. His dad ran right out of the cemetery and lived to tell the tale. Jeez, Seth, did he have a bow and arrow, too? Was his name Tonto? Daryl chuckled. Go ahead and laugh, but I'll tell you, this place is... Seth paused as another howl echoed throughout the cemetery. About two seconds later, what sounded like a whole pack of coyotes was crying out to the moonlight. Let's just get back to work, all right? said Clyde. They dug another half foot down when they heard another sound, but it was no coyote. It was a subtle little screak, 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 and it was coming from within the cemetery. Hey, did you hear that? asked Daryl. Yeah, it's probably a mouse or something, said Clyde. He was dripping with sweat. Screak, screak, screak. That doesn't sound like any mouse I've ever heard, said Seth. Sounds more like a rat. You should see the ones they have in those New York subways. Some the size of a small dog. Shh! Clyde leered at Daryl's numbskull cousin. It's a damn mouse. Get back to work. They dug for another half hour. The screak returned every few minutes, but they ignored it and kept their task. The lantern went dark and Seth climbed out of the hole to get more oil. Christ! I could be out right now with Rebecca Donaldson, making it at her daddy's T-Bird. Instead, I'm out here digging a hole for some stiff old ladies. Clyde looked at Daryl and shook his head. That kid ever shut up? No. Not since we were kids, said Daryl. Clyde and Daryl dug for a few more minutes, clearing away another quarter foot of dirt, when they realized Seth had been gone for twice as long as he should have been. Seth? What are you doing up there? called out Daryl. There was no response. Hey, kid! 
Quit screwing around. He suddenly remembered the flask sitting in the glove compartment of his truck. You better not be drinking any of my whiskey. But Seth didn't reply. Clyde and Darrell listened intently, but could only hear the sound of crickets and the light summer breeze blowing over the cemetery grass. God damn it, said Clyde. We're not going to get this shit done without that lantern. Seth, get the hell back here! An eruption of coyotes howled, seemingly in response to Clyde's yelling. Clyde and Daryl paused, staring at each other. I'll go get him, said Daryl, a familiar annoyance to his tone. He stuck his head out of the hole to see if he could see Seth, but immediately pulled it back down. Holy shit! What? said Clyde. Some crazy-looking critter was rushing toward me. Straight at my head, I think it was a squirrel. It had red eyes. Clyde laughed hysterically, even paused his work for half a minute. <laughs> are you are you kidding me? A red-eyed squirrel? Are you on something? Smoking dope like one of those beatniks now? I'm not kidding. Damn thing darted right toward me. I'm not joking. Look up there and see for yourself if you don't believe me. Clyde put down his shovel and mockingly tiptoed over to the side of the hole. He made a big, scaredy f cat face to Daryl and slowly lifted his head out of the grave. The cemetery had grown several shades darker since he last climbed out to relieve himself an hour prior. From his position, he could make out a few rows of graves and a big oak tree. No red-eyed squirrels, though. He turned back to Daryl. I don't see shit. Especially not your idiot cousin. I'm not lying, man. Craziest looking thing I've ever seen. Screak! 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 Clyde popped his head back up to investigate the sound and a flash of brown and white leapt toward him. He screamed as the thing landed on his face and sucked its tiny, razor-sharp teeth into his cheek. He fell backward into the hole as the creature, a squirrel with horrible red eyes, gnawed on his flesh. Daryl scrambled over to Clyde and yanked the squirrel off his head. A mouthful of skin came off with it, followed by spurts of blood that seemed to fall in rhythm with Clyde's screams. Daryl held the squirrel by its tail, its body gyrating and whipping back and forth like a ten-pound bass caught on a fishing line. Screak! 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 Jesus Christ! As fast as he could, he flung the squirrel against the side of the dirt hole and brought his shovel down on its head. The squirrel flattened to the ground. Blood and guts seeped out of its tiny orifices. Let's get out of here, said Daryl looking with panic at his friend, who was clutching his injury. He grabbed at the edge of the hole and hoisted himself up. Turning around, he gave Clyde a lift back up onto level ground. "'What the hell was that?' asked Clyde as they made their way back to the truck. "'Do you think it has rabies or something?' "'Must have been,' said Daryl, looking at Clyde's raw, red cheek. "'No healthy squirrel would charge at a man like that.' You'll need to get a shot at the hospital, real quick. Oh, that idiot kid didn't drive off with the truck. They were about twenty yards from the vehicle when another set of red eyes appeared in front of them. Then another. Suddenly, twelve glowing eyes shone back at them like a string of Christmas lights. Terrell took another step toward the vehicle, and a set of glowing red eyes ran along the ground and leapt at his legs. The squirrel's teeth dug into his shin, piercing through his jeans and skin like a steak knife through cheesecloth. Clyde watched in horror as another squirrel charged at Daryl and attached itself to his other leg. The way it darted toward him, it was as if the rodent were guided by some unseen force. He ran over to Daryl and kicked the squirrels away, but two more came charging not a second later. He could see the rest of them moving forward, poised to attack. Daryl and Clyde ran away as fast as they could. 
a pack of red eyes trailing behind them by just a few yards. Their truck blocked. They made for Parker's office near the western gate of the cemetery. More and more eyes lit up around them as they ran through the dark. And they weren't just squirrels either. They were deer, raccoons, rabbits. Daryl could have sworn he even saw some frogs with the evil eyes in the cemetery chapel's reflecting pond. They reached Parker's office and banged on the door, hooting and hollering for help. A water bowl with a sign labeled Hooch was set on the stoop next to a chewed-up bone. Parker, let us in! screamed Clyde as he beat his fist on the hard pine door. What the hell do you two want? said Parker from behind the door. The animals in the cemetery, they're possessed or something, said Daryl. I know it sounds crazy, but they bit Clyde's face and attacked me too. You gotta let us in. Parker swung the door open. Are you guys drunk? What the hell are you talking about? He was about to give them a good talking to, but stopped when he saw what was behind them. The creatures of the forest, the vermin, were moving toward them, squealing, their eyes ruby red, teeth and horns bared. It was like he had opened the door to a nightmare. What the fuck? Parker quickly slammed the door shut, leaving Daryl and Clyde outside, the beast just yards away. Parker, you bastard! yelled Daryl pulling on the doorknob to no avail. A few seconds later, they heard Parker scream, but it wasn't in anger. Clyde and Darrell looked through his office window to see Hooch, red-eyed and possessed by an incomprehensible rage. The dog was on top of him, tearing his arms open. The door swung open again a few seconds later, and Parker came out screaming, Hooch chasing right behind him, Parker made it no more than ten yards when the dog knocked him down to the ground. Parker screamed at Hooch, Heel! Sit, boy! But it was no use. The dog came down on him and tore open his throat. Blood gushed out like water in a fire hydrant. A peck of squirrels jumped out of a nearby tree and rushed over to feed on the rest of him. With the beasts distracted by their supper, Clyde and Daryl booked it toward the truck. On their way back, they saw more eyes come out from behind trees and graves and move in their direction. They arrived at the truck, and Clyde practically dove through the window. Daryl paused in horror, recognizing the half-eaten corpse of his cousin, Seth, slouched against the passenger side door. You drive, said Daryl. I'll deal with these critters. He hopped into the back of the truck, grabbed a spare shovel, and took an attack position as he wrapped his arm around a loose leather strap. "'What the hell are you doing?' Clyde exclaimed as he fired up the truck and hit the accelerator. "'These coyotes killed my cousin.' Well, "'Hold on, then!' Clyde turned the truck back onto the gravel path. As a pack of coyotes emerged from the tree line of Valley View Forest, one of them, a larger specimen, jumped toward Daryl. He swung and connected with the predator, sending it to the ground where it was trampled by others in the pack. Three other coyotes followed and Daryl played home run derby with them, whacking them this way and that. The truck was nearing the east gate of the cemetery when two more coyotes, bigger and meaner than the ones before, jumped up on the bed. One of them had a piece of a familiar redhead scalp dangling from its teeth. It made Daryl nearly puke in rage. He swung and connected with it, sending it off the side of the truck, but the other one bit his leg. He fell down on the bed as the leather strap broke from the bed. He screamed in agony. The creature released his leg and jumped on top of him, its teeth inches away. He could feel its warm breath on his face and he pushed the shaft of the shovel against the coyote's neck. Up close, its eyes looked aflame. Clyde looked back and shouted, Daryl, hold on tight! Daryl grabbed the side of the truck and Clyde pulled a sharp and sudden turn. The truck tilted on its side and it was practically on two wheels, sending the coyote off the bed. 
they heard a loud thunk as the truck ran over the creature's body. Clyde pushed the pedal to the floor and sped toward the gate. There was a loud smash as the front bumper drove the gate off its hinges and sent it crashing onto the sidewalk. The gravediggers, who would never dig another grave again, sped off into the night. Dawn approached. Two by two, the red eyes of the cemetery faded into the early morning light. Vermin From the collection Tales from Valley View Cemetery Copyright 2015 John Brell and Jay Sullivan Narrated by Joshua Googe